Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University, and in this week's Spotlight on Story, we're going to be focusing on the Immortal Iron Fist. More specifically, the first six books, okay? The, the first whole chapter part is like the first ten issues, and then there's another, and it goes all the way up to uh, issue number 27, and there's an annual, and there's a whole bunch of crossovers, but we're just going to do the first six issues, because that should be more than enough for you to realize that this is an absolutely amazing series, and if you ever thought about liking Iron Fist and even the slightest, this is the one that's going to get you hooked and addicted and go, oh yeah, I'm a master of the Iron Fist stories because I know it all now. So let's get started. All right. Uh, the Immortal Iron Fist originally came out in January of 2007. And then, you know, as time progressed, it progressed itself. Um, we got writers, dude, on this, we're not joking around. All right. We're not even in the slightest. <laughs> so let me get right into this. Uh, the story was written jointly by Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction. David Aja, excuse me, David Aja and Travel Foreman are two of the pencilers uh, in this fantastic, beautiful story. Uh, inkers, we've got, again, David Aja and now Derek Friordolfs. Um, Friordolfs. Yeah, that's a hard name to pronounce, so uh, I apologize in advance. Matt Hollingsworth did the colors in this, and Dave Lemphere did the letters, uh, edited by Walter uh, Warren Simons, and yeah, Joe Quesada is all over this. Uh, Aja does the covers for these, which are just spectacular covers, dude. Okay, so let's get started on the story itself. We're going to start off in the Kunlun mountain ranges, where the Mongol hordes are coming, and they want the Golden City. Um... I guess this is like the one day <laughs> that the uh, that the city is open. Uh, uh, for for the sake of conversation, for anybody who doesn't know, really quickly, Kunlun, the uh, it's actually an alien city. It's not from Earth at all. Although there are Earthlings there, they've come across the the, the city gates. The entrance to the city appears in Tibet once every ten years. By once, I mean one day out of every ten years. Yeah. So there's that. Anyway, these guys apparently have figured it out, and they come, and this one Iron Fist, Bei Ming Tian, shows up, and this is circa uh, 1227 AD. So he shows up, and he's, he by himself holds off the Mongol hordes. We then switch to the current time, uh, where our current Iron Fist, Daniel Rand, is putting a beat down on some serious Hydra hordes. This is called the Last Iron Fist story. <laughs> worth it. Totally worth it. <laughs> and to show how he's beating up on everybody, there's a really quick um, uh, recap of how he became the Iron Fist. It's very, very minor. Like, they don't show hardly anything at all. In fact, if you've never read the Iron Fist origin stories, you will not have any idea how this happened. Not really. You'll, you'll have the slightest glimpse. So I would recommend going back to Marvel Premiere issue number 15, 16, and 17, if I'm remembering correctly, but definitely issue number 15 of Marvel Premiere. If not, there are also many trade paperbacks, which I'll try and link below in the description so that you can get your hands on all of the, whether it's digital copies or the actual physical copies or trades of these, these actual comic books that will tell you the origin story and so on and so forth, including this story. Um... Anyway, uh, Danny Rand is putting a beat down these guys, and he's remembering his father, basically. Talking about, oh, I know all of this about my father, and that about my father. And you, um, and it's basically just Iron Fist putting a beat on people, but there's an interlude. They don't indicate it necessarily, but earlier on, <laughs> earlier on, Daniel Rand was sitting in Rand Corporations, uh, this is before, uh, this is after it had, it had left being Rand Meacham. It's just Rand Corporation, Rand Industries. And Jaron Hogarth is his lawyer. And he's working out this, this, uh, uh deal, this, this, uh, big deal between Wago Industries by this guy named Zhao, uh, Zhao. And, uh, Daniel Rand is just kind of sitting there. He's just thinking, he's like, hmm. I don't know about this. He, he's trying to mull it over. But Hogarth has been dealing with this for the past three to ten years. I forget exactly, but at least three years he's been trying to work on this deal. Wago Industries, which is a China subsidiary 
and Danny Rand has, has discovered that they actually do work directly for the government of China. And we're going to get into the history of that in a moment. But first, they're trying to buy a, a certain train rail system, like the bullet train system, from Rand Industries. And, and you know, it seems like a pretty cut and dry deal. Wago Industries seems really into this. Hogarth, of course, is really into this also. Danny just doesn't seem that so. So he's just talking. He's like, hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this, man. You, um... You know, you are basically working for China, like directly for China. And I don't like the whole Tiananmen Square thing. I don't like what you guys are doing to Tibet. I don't like what you guys are doing this, that, and the other thing. For the sake of conversation, this story would probably never be written today because of the massive success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> it, um, it's making a lot of money off of the Chinese market. So they would never say something like this today. That being said... Um, it's, it's, it's cool because he's at least giving credence to where he came from, where he grew up. So he just basically says, listen, this deal is not going to happen. Now, Mr. Zhao, he's, he's, he seems pretty cool by it, but he's just like on his way out. He's like, well, you know what? I'm sure that Stark International will be able to hook me up, whatever. Uh, it's a rich man who's willing to pass up on $10.6 billion. That's right. This would have made Rand Industries several times over. And he just makes a comment like, you know, it's a nice office, Mr. Rand. I hope to have one just like it. And he leaves. And Danny's like, all of a sudden he snowflakes out. He's like, whoa, whoa, did you just insult me? Is that a threat? What? And Hogarth just kind of whack, <laughs> smacks him in the back of the head. Danny's all dizzy and whatnot. Probably affects him later. Because he's just like, dude, I just worked tirelessly on this. Dude, you know what? I quit. I'm done. I'm done. Forget about the idea you don't want to work with them. But you let me go through all these years of busting my hump to get this process done. And now you just spuriously, randomly just, just drop the whole deal? No, unacceptable. You don't respect anybody. You don't respect me. I'm out. Hogarth has been with him since the beginning. So uh, uh, I believe he actually worked with his father. So anyway, he leaves. And Danny's just like, okay, I'm going to figure this stuff out on my own. So this is when he decides to go to the American subsidiary that is um, uh, Wygo Corporation. And he goes in there and the, the offices are immaculate. There's no dust on the floor. You can tell that nobody's really walked in here since the, the couple years ago when they first put down these desks. All these desks, mind you, which have no files inside. The computers, they, they, they don't have anything. Like, there's nothing going on. It's just, it's a front corporation. And while he's in there, because he's trying to get this uh, information, it's funny. Danny... I like that even in the, the Netflix series, season two just dropped last Friday. Uh, I'm, I'm going to release this on, on a Saturday, uh, one full week and a day after it was released on Netflix, just because. Watching it, I, I can see the similarities and where they're trying to go with this season. This season is much better than the first season. But anyway, um, they, um, they, they're showing that, that there was, there's just nothing going on here. And, uh, all of a sudden, these Hydra agents kind of pop up. It wasn't, it's not that this was a trap. It's that they were prepared for anybody who decided to try and sneak in. So that's where this battle with the hordes of Hydra are happening. It's in the middle of the night. It's all around these, uh, these rooftops and these uh, Rand Corporation is in the distance. Like, this is just a beautiful art. The story is amazing. And all of a sudden, this one Hydra knucklehead shows up and he, he's got the whole, you know, he's got his arms out and two people are behind him with the different arm positions. Like, you know, cut off one head and two will, will take its place. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not what bothers me. The idea that bothers me is that all of a sudden we get the first appearance of the Mecha Gorgon. That's right, this gigantic spidery metal device that just, it's relentless and it's everything on it is just razors. And. Danny just, he's not in the right place. Again, this must have been a slap on the back of the head. <laughs> I'm just speculating. But he can't, you're expecting him to just run up and, and fly through the, you know, the, the, the barbs and just iron fist this thing right in the face. But he, he can't. He's just, he can't get his footing. He can't get anything. He just keeps on getting jacked up. And while he's, he's putting up the best fight he possibly can, knocking off an arm or two, there's just too many of these razors. Way too many. And he winds up getting practically eviscerated he's laying there and he's trying to get his chi back in order again and he just can't not by the time this thing just 
comes back over to him and it knocks him off a rooftop. He falls through a um, like a, a glass house and whatnot. And the, the guys from Hydra are just looking down and they're just like, yeah, this is actually the wrong guy. Shoot, let's get out of here. So they just leave him. They figure he's going to die and the police are going to come and get him. And I did mention this was 2007, right? Yeah, this is around the time of the Superhero Registration Act. Mm-hmm, that's right. So um, they're expecting that Tony Stark and S.H.I.E.L.D. and all of them are going to come by and they're going to be like, Hey, man, you're an unregistered hero. You're going to jail. We're going to put you in a little microverse in the vault off in the negative zone and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, they were they were kind of evil. When, when heroes go bad, you know? So uh, what winds up happening instead is he actually gets whisked away by some of his friends. Enough people come in, they, they recognize, you know, what's going on, and they take him away, and there's um, Luke Cage hanging out with him in the, uh, in the hospital. And, yeah, good thing for him. Good thing for him. <laughs> so uh, they're having a conversation about uh, Misty Knight and Colleen Wang, how they've restarted the, um, what is it called, the, uh, the Heroes for Hire. <laughs> And it's like, oh God, are you kidding me right now? And they're they're actually on the by them actually, mind you, these are considered superheroes. These are considered vigilantes. Misty, of course, for her arm. While Colleen doesn't really display any of that stuff, you know what? Go and look up uh, Colleen Wing. Uh, Colleen Wing explained in a minute. I'm sure I've got it in the description below. I'm sure I'll remember to put that there because yeah kind of crucial. She does technically have a superpower, but she hardly ever uses it, and it is related directly to Iron Fist. Regardless. Um, they are considered superheroes. So their vigilantism, um, either way, they would go to jail, but they open up Heroes for Hire. So clearly they're working for Stark, right? Well, not really. And you'd have to go and check out the Heroes for Hire series during the Civil War, uh, the Marvel Superhero Civil War. In the meantime, we're introduced to this guy named uh, Orson Randall. Now, I've never liked the idea that his last name was Randall because it sounds too much like Danny Rand. So Orson Randall. Turns out that this is the Iron Fist who immediately preceded Danny Rand. All right, Danny Rand is the 66th Iron Fist. And the 65th Iron Fist was this guy, Orson Randall, who seems to be still very competent in the uh the martial arts and he could still channel he could still summon the iron fist um the the trick is there are people hunting him these two girls specifically there's a bunch of people um and and, and realistically it turns out it's just it's the steel serpent davos he's actually hunting him down and he's a really big guy not like in the tv series not like in the netflix series he's actually a physically intimidating sob he's huge he's scary and i wouldn't want to meet this guy in a light dark alley i don't i wouldn't want him i wouldn't want to meet him in a crowded room dude just with machine guns pointed at him he's a he's a frightening individual you know what i'm saying unfortunately not like in the netflix series acting you know be damned dude's got to look scary and that guy doesn't look scary here, this guy looks scary, and he's wearing purple and things like that instead of the typical other colors that he would wear back in the day. Yeah, this this is an old, original main adversary for Iron Fist, so it's perfect that he's here. And uh, his story is interesting. One of these days, I got to do a, a story on the uh, on uh, the Steel Serpent because he's a very interesting character. In the meantime, he's always wanted the Iron Fist. He's always felt that he deserved it, and uh, he failed trying to get the, uh, the, the, the iron fist. He tried trying to, he failed trying to fight and even weakened, um, Sholau, the dragon Sholau. He just, he didn't have it in him. So, uh, he just went after iron fist directly. Anyhow, um, yeah, Danny Rand wakes up in this, uh, the, like this night nurse facility and he tries to get up, but he winds up passing out. That shouldn't have happened. What also should have happened is three hours later, he wakes up um, Luke Cage is there with him, so, like, ain't nothing gonna happen to this guy. It doesn't matter if the hordes of Hydra show up. Luke Cage is right there, so, I mean, come on. <laughs> but he orders a whole bunch of Chinese food, and they're just hanging out. And, of course, there's there's the banter between these two, and this goes back to the original Power Man and Iron Fist comics, excuse me, that, uh, that came out way back in the day, in the, the 70s and the 80s, where, um, they showed that that Luke Cage loved working with Danny Rand because Danny Rand was thought to be some, you know, pauper. <laughs> but it turns out he was just this ridiculously rich billionaire type who wanted to live the urban life. And Luke was very offended by that. And I can't blame him. 
I can't blame him at all. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're trying to act like, you know, you're poor, but you're not. You could have funded Heroes for Hire the entire time. What do you do? We're out there scraping uh, and, and taking jobs that we don't like, because you know, jobs that, you know, test our moralities because we, we were trying to stay afloat. And you could have funded us the whole time so we could actually do good jobs. And uh, yeah, I, I can understand. I can understand. Regardless, um, yeah, he uh, he shows up. He's eating all this Chinese food. Finally, knucklehead Danny Rand wakes up and he's like, uh, you got any for me? Yeah, here's a box. Join in, you know, dig in before I eat it all. <laughs> so it's cool seeing their banter back and forth again. It, it's definitely refreshing. And again, um, uh, Fraction and Brubaker, all... All, all love goes out to these guys for this amazing uh, dialogue. Um, this is when Danny finds out about the um, the Heroes for Hire group by Misty Knight and Colleen Wang and a few others. So Orson Randall, anyway, he, he wound up getting attacked by these two swan sisters. All right, there's these two girls. They're actually swans. Uh, in a sense, they, they work for the or cranes. They, they're actually cranes, but they're called the swan sisters, I think. Or the crane, they are called the crane sisters. Anyhow, so um, uh, they're, they're very different than what happened in season two of, of the Netflix series for Iron Fist. These are two women who are actually birthed by the, or created by the Crane Mother. She is from a different, uh, there, there's, what is it, the seven golden cities of Kunlun. There are actually seven of them, and she's from one of them. Now, once every 300 years, she births a champion. Who can try and vie to become the Iron Fist. Uh, that one Iron Fist will defend that city against all other challengers. There's a very different take on what the Iron Fist actually means in the Immortal Iron Fist series that we're reading here. A, a drastically, radically different take. It's not just the idea of you're going to protect our city. No, you're going to protect all of the cities, but more than that, you're going to champion our city specifically against all these other people who are going to be trying to vie to be the Iron Fist also. And if you get defeated, it's because you're killed, and they're going to wind up taking the Iron Fist at that point, and we don't trust those other cities. Nobody trusts each other, and it's all just a big game, and it's ridiculous. And there are a lot of secrets involved. And it's not cool. It's not cool. And Orson Randall knew about this. Orson Randall, as it turns out, is also a, um, a World War I veteran where he took in a lot of gas. Uh, so you're assuming it's mustard gas. Um, he survived it because he's the freaking immortal Iron Fist. But yeah, it affected him. A lot of things affected, affected him. He got PTSD, PTSD in a really bad way. And... Um, he just, he wound up leaving. All right, that story winds up coming out at one point. He winds up just leaving the order altogether. And some people come back and they start, you know, try uh, some of the Kunlunians come after him and, and, and try and uh, reclaim the Iron Fist from him. He's not having it. The, the latest champion comes directly after him and he freaks out and he winds up killing this champion. So now he's a, he's a wanted man by everyone. Like Davos, the Steel Serpent wants him. The Crane Mother wants him because that was actually her champion. <laughs> um, every, Kunlun wants him. Everybody wants him. Everybody's going after this guy. So he shows up in America because he's thinking, listen, Danny Rand is the current Iron Fist. Um, forget about this. There's a Marvel sliding time scale. I've talked about this several times before. I got to make a video on this one of these days uh, where it's all centered. I just point to that video. But Maybe by the time you're seeing this, go and look up uh, Marvel time, Sliding Time Scale, Cart Comic Book University. You'll you'll find an explanation there. In the interim, we've got um, he showed De uh, Orson Randall shows up at uh, one of the American border crossings, and he's like, "Hey man, you know I'm trying to get in." It's like, "Hey, right, let me see your passport." So he starts doing this goal, uh, this green hypnotism thing with him with his iron fist. He's using his chi to hypnotize this cat. And, you know, he's basically doing a Jedi mind trick. All my documents are in order. I think all your documents are in order. My passport is just fine. Yeah, your passport's just fine. No worries with my visa. Yeah, your visa's totally cool. You know, welcome to America from Tibet, bud. And he's like, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. That doesn't quite happen, but you're assuming at any moment he's going to say that. All right? So, uh, 
that happens there and he's able to get through. The problem is a couple other guards, a few other guards show up. It's like, listen, this is a pretty crowded airport. We don't want any innocents to get hurt here. And most importantly, we saw what you did, dude. We don't appreciate people doing that to the American, you know, border patrol. So listen, how about you just come with us, make this nice and easy. We're going to process you. You already, you already got in, you already stamped in. We can't mess with that. But you come in and you're going to have a talk with us and uh, we're going to try and figure out what we're going to do with you. So you're assuming these are Registration Act guys, not the one guy when, when they're in the uh, car, he's in the, Davos is in the back seat and they're in the car and the one guy's like, oh yeah, Mr. Uh, Davos, we got your, uh, we got the guy in the back seat right now. And he's talking in Chinese. So you're assuming it's Mandarin. Well, <laughs> Orson Randall is like, you know, I speak Chinese, right? And he beats the holy hell out of these guys and he escapes. These guys come after him. Uh, they start threatening innocents. Uh, it bothers Davos, but not too darn much. And uh, he just he just wipes the floor with these guys. It's a huge scene in New York City. Danny Rand, meanwhile, is back home and he's still got bandages all over him. That's one of the things I love about Danny Rand. He's always got bandages on him. He's always jacked up. Uh, which is funny because he can focus his chi to heal, but he learned that much later. In the meantime, he's he's practicing back home, and all of a sudden, um, uh, Jaron Hogarth comes walking back in. And it's like, um, psh, what are you doing? I, I thought you quit. He's like, yeah, but I rehired myself because obviously I'm the only knucklehead around here who actually understands what's going on, you moron. So anyway, um, I'm going to be doing this and this and this. That's what I'm going to be doing. And you're going to sign this stuff, go and look at this stuff, and bang, bang, bang. Let's go. Let's get on with business. He's like, okay, cool. And he gets dizzy. Uh, or um, um, Danny Rand does. He gets dizzy. And he winds up almost fainting. Well, it turns out that he's like, I know this feeling. He, he's actually traveling around. He's like, I know this feeling. Um, somebody's using the chi. Somebody's using the iron fist. And he's like, from everything I was taught, that should be impossible. I'm the only one with the iron fist. Yeah, well, they didn't exactly teach you everything you were supposed to know. <laughs> so, uh, or everything worthy of knowing. So he's just all sorts of freaked out at this point. What the frick is going on? Like his hand cramps up and everything. He doesn't know what's going on. So um, what's cool is that at the beginning of every one of these issues, you wind up meeting a different iron fist. All right. And that's important because when he goes to this uh, this location and he sees these guys here, uh, all these, all these messed up people. He's like, what the frick is going on? You know, um, by the time he actually does meet Orson Randall, Orson tells him, listen, everything you thought you knew was wrong, dude. There have been so many iron fists before you. And, you know, I, I know that we're called the iron fist, but, and mind you, Danny Rand has always been a character who's kind of been not the, the not the brightest. All right. Massive martial arts skills, learns a whole bunch about meditation and chi and focus and ki and yeah, 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 yeah. But as far, you know, not only does he not know the basics of math very well, but he's just, he, he wasn't taught a lot of common sense. He was taught to be a weapon. He was not taught how to actually use that weapon. So, plus he did also choose to leave Kunlun, mind you. So he didn't learn all the intricacies of, or intricacies of what could be done. Now, while he's... Uh, talking to Orson Randall, uh, who, who is the predecessor of the Iron Fist, mind you, he explains to him, listen, man, there's a whole bunch of Iron Fists that have come before you, and you're the only knucklehead who took the term Iron Fist, literally. The rest of us, yeah, we could focus our chi on our fist. That's the basics. I use guns, and I make sure that my bullets fire chi bullets, all right? My guns fire chi bullets, there was uh, uh, an Iron Fist before you who, who would light up his bow staff. Another one, she would light up her arrows with Chi, and, and she's actually killed more people than anybody else. <laughs> um, all these different Iron Fists who used various weapons or, or different paraphernalia and channeled their, their Chi into different ways. People who would actually fire their Chi, you know, as like a blast of energy. So eventually, Danny Rand would start to learn some of this stuff, but... They've got to go out and find the book of the immortal Iron Fist. Now, this is one of those situations where they've shown that the Iron Fists never really trusted their masters. All right. Not not all of them, at least. Most of them never really trusted their masters. So they would write down, oh, I've learned how to do this by doing this and this and this. And it's some really intricate stuff. They um, 
uh, Orson Randall hid that book away, of course, because he's been off and dealing with his PTSD and the mustard gas exposure and all that stuff, he wound up um, becoming addicted to uh, opium. So he'd be smoking the peace pipe a lot, <laughs> all right? He'd be going to opium houses and everything just to kind of deal with everything that's going on and to forget what's going on, to try and cope, all right? But at this point, he realizes that Danny Rand is back in New York. He's accessible since he's in New York. Let me go to New York and actually meet up with this guy. Tell him what's the, what the real deal is with the, uh, the Iron Fists and what the Immortal Weapon uh, concept actually is and how the Immortal Weapons are used and what Kun Lun is really all about. Uh, and this is, he's, he's hidden the book of the Iron Fist, which he's contributed to as well, often uh, a sewer systems that used to be owned by Rand Meacham. So the, 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 the corporation that his father built. You also learn a whole bunch about his father. You realize that his father has not only been to Kunlun before, but actually grew up there, was scheduled to fight for the Iron Fist, but it wound up not happening. The day that he was supposed to go back and, you know, with his family, and then you go and check out his actual origin story, and you realize what actually happened to him. Frickin' Meacham, jerk. So anyway, <laughs> um... We're learning more about Davos also. Davos is in charge of this Hydra contingent that Zhao is running. And these Crane sisters, it turns out that there's a lot more of them. He absorbs their energy. They go out and they do whatever he bids them to do. But then when he chooses to, he absorbs their energy. He's not getting his chi from within. Orson Randall, when he finally faces him, realizes that he's not getting his chi from within. He's getting it from without. So he's made a deal with the... Um, the crane mother to get revenge because like I said, only every 300 years, she actually gets her, um, the, the chance to bear a new potential champion. And when Orson Randall killed that champion, she wanted revenge. So she, she elicited the help of Davos and said, Hey man, I'm going to give you unlimited power. So he's got that kind of power and he absorbs the energy of the crane sisters. Well, it kills the Crane sisters, but that's okay because she can send more. The Crane mother can send more. Now, she's only got a limited amount. It's not like un endless Crane sisters. When a dozen more or two dozen, I think it's one dozen more comes, they've got a message for them. If you fail, the Crane mother is going to torture your soul until the end times, until the twilight of man. And he's, and he's just like, I'll take it. I'm good. No, nope, we're fine. <laughs> uh, but Davos is, for the most part, in charge. It's his plan, it's his everything, it's his operation. But if he fails, it's, it's the queen, uh, the, 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 the crane mother's uh, desires to see that Orson Randall is killed and that uh, he winds up becoming the new uh, champion of Kun Lun. So which actually be the champion of uh, Kun Zi, I think it's called, that particular city, that, that of the golden, those of the golden city. Uh, which would mean the defeat in a tournament for Daniel Rand. Now, uh, this is this is great. This is great. Uh, here's where we're going to try and try and bring it all in. Most of it in. Most of it in. The parts in this first six books. These these cranes show up, and they decide this is the time to actually strike. So, Danny Rand is is learning from. Uh, Orson Randall at this point. He's finding out his history. He's finding out a whole lot more also about his father, who Orson Randall actually taught how to fight. So that's interesting. So he didn't even learn from the Thunderer. He learned from Orson Randall. So all of this is coming together after they've retrieved the Immortal Weapons book, all right, the book of the Iron Fist. This is supposed to be the thing that now that, that Orson Randall has given this book to Danny Rand, who is the current Iron Fist, now he can really learn how to use his powers. So they get this, but they're tired. For some reason, they're, they're just not recovering, all right? And, and, and it's interesting because Orson Randall is trying to explain to him what the Iron Fist actually really is. He's like, you always thought that the, the, the power of the Iron Fist was a river flowing into you. You're wrong. You were always wrong. Your chi is a river flowing into the original power of Sholao, the dragon. And that power is an ocean. So he's got to learn that 
the reason why his iron fist, why his chi was getting messed up every time that Orson Randall would use it at the same time is because he was thinking that the energy was flowing into him. That's not the case. His energy was flowing into the, the, the ocean. And th that backlash, all right, he, he, he was kind of kind of getting a backlash whenever he was using the Iron Fist, especially the closer he got to him. So he had to learn how to change his chi around. So that's interesting because he's just, just the idea of learning how to actually focus your chi in a better way makes him more powerful. But uh, now actually learning these techniques, that's going to help. And these techniques are above him. So it's going to take a long time for him to learn how to do that. He would have to join the New Avengers at one point and hang out with Doctor Strange become a disciple and understand that his power is mystical. So while he's not a magician, while Danny Rand is not a magician, he is using magical powers to be the Iron Fist. So all of this, so interesting, so amazing, like seeing, again, the works of Brubaker and Fraction, man. This is, this is such amazing work. So they finish uh, retrieving, meanwhile, like, um, what do you call it? The, 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 the hordes of Hydra have already shown up. They're trying to infiltrate. They're trying to get their, their hands on the book of the um, of the Iron Fist also. But Danny and, and Orson succeed. They get the book. They're trying to go back. They're like, listen, we got to go back to my headquarters at Rand. I've got a secret room there and everything, and we'll be okay there. We can actually rest. Orson Randall's like, yeah, because I for some reason, I can't catch my breath. I don't understand what's going on. He's like, yeah, and I'm not healing the right way. So let's just go back. Let's actually sleep for about a week, all right, and just... Get our get ourselves back into focus. Excuse me. They take the uh, they're taking the elevator up. He's like, I can't believe that you're using like this is how you're using your father's fortune. He's like, Do you know how your father actually got this fortune? He's like, uh, No, and I don't want to hear the story right now. That's a shame. Uh, but he's like, I use this fortune in many ways. You got to understand, I'm a superhero who really just has a glowing fist. I mean, I can't fly, so I use elevators. And even around my city, I have more real estate in New York City than anybody in the world. That's actually important because realistically, most of the buildings in New York City and in Toronto and all over the place, the reason why we have a horrible housing market is because these other people are paying way over market value to get the houses and they're not even being used. Uh, apartment uh, buildings, everything. And that's the reason why the prices are going up because they can get more. <laughs> Realtors are just going to be like, oh, well, this building sold for above market value. I'm going to bring this one up to, and now market value has actually shifted. It's, it's increased. Um, Sorry for the quick economics lesson there, but the point is, and I imagine a lot of you already know, but for those who didn't, <laughs> so he's like, I actually bought a whole bunch of these buildings myself so that the rooftops that I'm jumping to, to patrol the city and keep it safe are actually my rooftops. So I, I've got stashes everywhere and, and I know, you know, escape routes and everything in case the, sh the knuckleheads from S.H.I.E.L.D. show up. So that's interesting. I love that. I absolutely love that. So we can get around a city quickly because he owns most of these buildings in this block, at the, or in this, um, this city, at least. Anyhow, so when they get up and they open up the doors, like, oh, crap. There is a horde of Hydra operatives in there, plus 12 or so of these Crane sisters, plus Davos the Steel Serpent himself. Son of a gun. So as it stands, they're exhausted, and they've got to fight through these hordes. They're getting their butts handed to them. Meanwhile... Um, we come to find out that Jaron Hogarth, the reason why he came back, and when he came back, he's actually been secretly trying to get the railway, railway system deal going without, or, uh, without, um, Danny Rand knowing about it. Why? Because they kidnapped his mother. They kidnapped Jaron Hogarth's mother. They sent back one of her fingers so that they know that they're not, so that he knows they're not playing around. So it's like, you ever want to see her again, bud, you better get the system working. So it's like, oh, for crying out loud, fine, I'll get the deal passed. All right, just, 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 just relax. Well, at this point, they're trying to get him. They're trying to get him now. So Hydra's coming after him. Um, in order to keep him safe, uh, Danny Rand hired um, and, and there's actually a tie-in, so you understand how this happened. You don't understand how it happened here, but through the tie-ins, you will hired Heroes for Hire, which is Missy Knight, Colleen Wing, and Luke Cage to protect him. Um, um, uh, Jaron actually hired them to come and protect him. So it's on the up and up. It's like, listen, I need protection, man. So 
they come and they show up and, and the hordes of Hydra come after him. They they grab him and they're bringing him to where uh, Danny Rand is. And it's a good thing because they show up just in time. Because while all this fighting is going on and Danny Rand is putting a beating on everybody and Orson Randall is already exhausted having fought through all these Hydra agents and the Crane sisters to begin with, Davos, who's got the power of all these Crane sisters with him, absorbs all of it. He's got power beyond belief right now, and he very easily dispatches of Orson Randall. It was not even remotely a fair fight. This moron who's constantly talking about honor, 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 he has zero honor. He has his own code of honor, which is honorless. Um, he's, he's a morally bankrupt, you know, dog pile. That's what he is. And you got to love his false sense of, of, of um, honor as he's going forward in this. Like it's, it's impressive. The, 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 the hurdles he has to jump through to keep the, the, the idea that he's actually the one with morals, with honor here. It's, it's beautiful. So he actually kills Orson Randall. Orson Randall is dead by the end of this particular, by the end of book six. Yeah, I know. We just got introduced to this character. We're starting to love this character. and eh. But Danny Rand's able to get to him in time because um, the Heroes for Hire show up. Colleen, Misty, and Luke Cage. And they're cutting a swath through these Hydra agents and everything. So Danny gets the breath and he, he's able to go forth. He's like, oh my God, are you okay? You know, you're going to be okay, Orson. You're going to be okay. He's like, Danny, I'm not going to be okay. Don't be stupid. Reach into my heart. Like the, the, the dying words he says is, don't be an idiot. <laughs> but he's like, dude, take my chi. You're going to need it for what's about to happen. He's like, what do you mean what's about to happen? He's like, Just take it. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> so he dies he's like, fine. So the same way that he took the power from Sholau, the dragon, same way he takes the power. Reaches his hands into his chest and absorbs his chi. So technically, all of the chi now belongs to all all your chi are belong to us all of the chi that um that is in existence currently belongs to danny rand so he's much more powerful than he was before and davos can't handle that kind of power and the funny thing is he's calling him a cheater after he after uh davos the steel serpent gets his butt handed to him he's like you're a cheater i should have known you weren't gonna play fair are you kidding me right now so he teleports away and these guys are like, oh, crap. And it turns out that Jaren got kidnapped. Because while these guys are fighting, they brought uh, Jaren with them. The Heroes for Hire brought Jaren with them. And he got kidnapped by Hydra as they were making their escape. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> no, nobody was watching him. So everything's crazy. And we still don't know why. why um, uh, what do you call it? Wait, oh, for crying out loud. I can't remember the name right now. It's not important. Why this Zhao version of, um, of Hydra wants the the train system why they want the, the these rail systems and and like 10 or more trains that we still don't know why we're going to find out later on and it's pretty sick when you figure out what's going on i'm not going to spoil that for you but at this point still there in uh rand corporations rand industries uh Kila, the the thunderer shows up along with um the august personage of jay of jade so these two leaders of Kunlun show up. It's like, Danny, it's time. It's time to defend the capital city against the uh, the intercessors. It's like, what are you talking about? Are you serious? You, like, my friend has just been kidnapped. My business is in disarray. Everything is crazy right now. And you want me to come and fight in a freaking tournament? What do you think this is? Dragon Ball Z? I may have thrown in the last part. But, yeah, I'm right. You know I'm right. So he's like, yeah, dude, listen. Everything that you need, everything that you need to know and understand is at the capital city, including Davos. You're going to have to face him too. So he's like, fine, fine. So if all my paths lead there anyways, let's just go. And that's how book six ends. That's how this first chapter ends. And it's sick. And it gets better. It does get better. The next four issues are still written by Fraction and, and um, um, Brubaker. Uh, still drawn by Aja, like all of this uh, Holloway, everything. It's still amazing. The uh, it actually it's actually still amazing up until book sixteen. It's still absurdly amazing. After that, uh, it finishes at about issue number twenty-seven. So those final eleven issues 
aren't as good. Every so often you'll still find a great uh, a book devoted specifically to, like for instance, uh, issue number seven is devoted to a single Iron Fist in history, so you get a better understanding of who these people were, these immortal weapons, and how they used their powers, and their, their sublime stories. Uh, the final couple of issues was kind of like a rush to end it because everybody, for, there was there was multiple reasons why people just pulled out of the book, um, pulled out of the stories and all of the, the side stories that were going on at the same time. Iron Fist was an immense, amazing property at this moment in time in, in Marvel history. Like this could, we could have gone anywhere with Iron Fist at this point. He was high real estate. I know, hard to imagine, right? But it's true. It's so true. And um, it wound up ending, it was kind of rushed ending. I know that the um, the people responsible for that, they were they were kind of, you know, not attacked online. It wasn't as bad as the comic skate thing that's going on right now, but they were pretty much, you know, blistered. Like, you know, what, why'd you make the story so bad? It was more about ending it and giving it an actual conclusion as opposed to just dropping it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, today, it would have probably been just dropped and then Hopefully later on somebody would have come along and finished the story. That's what happens today. But back then they're like, no, 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 no. The fans need closure. The fans need closure. And they weren't wrong. They weren't necessarily wrong. Just didn't pull out quite as well as we were hoping it was going to. But this was an absolutely amazing story. Like I said, if you want to learn about Iron Fist and really love Iron Fist, this is a series to start reading. This is a series to just tear at it with and i'm gonna have a whole bunch of, like i said a whole bunch of links in the description below so go and check those out reading order all that good stuff and that's going to be it for me guys professor bill comic book university class dismissed